Post game with Ice Dogs forward Mike Levin. Mike, 16th goal of the year. You've obviously been a consistent goal scorer right now. You're leaving for uh, Bulgaria for uh, the U20s for Israel. Just talk about obviously you played there last year, but uh, getting the honor again. Just how how much pride and and you know uh, excited are you to play for your country once again? Yeah, I'm very excited. Very excited to to see my friends that I grew up with, see some of my family and. Uh, hopefully coming back with a goal. Yeah, very excited. They, they That's Israeli them. hockey player Mike Levin being interviewed by a local reporter in St. Catharines, Ontario. The 18-year-old's been living here in Canada for a few years to launch his career, but he took a leave from his team, the Niagara Ice Dogs of the OHL, to compete for Israel's men's under-20 team at the IIHF World Championships held this past week in Bulgaria. Now, you'll remember we've been reporting that Israel had originally been disinvited to participate in that tournament because of what the world hockey body called security reasons after October 7th. The ban was reversed with five days to go until the first puck drop. So Team Israel wound up winning all five of their games and the gold medal. Levin was the tournament's overall leading scorer with a couple of hat tricks to his name. And the gold helped catapult the team from Division Three up to Division Two next year. And while Team Israel was competing halfway around the world, 20 Israeli teenagers who play hockey at a rink in northern Israel have been spending a couple of weeks here in Canada. They'd been invited to get away from the ongoing war back home as guests of the Jewish community in Winnipeg and Vancouver and Toronto and Maccabi, Canada. And the ice here is next level. I mean, just the ice quality, being able to even skate outdoors, which I've never done, because, you know, Israel is kind of hot. Yeah. Uh, it has been fantastic, because, as I said before, when life is hard, hockey has been there for me. So being able to do it right now has been amazing. I'm Ellen Besner, and this is what Jewish Canada sounds like. Welcome to the CJN Daily, a podcast of the Canadian Jewish News, sponsored by Metropia. For about two weeks, some of the Israeli teens trained in Vancouver and the rest trained in Winnipeg. And then they all finished their Canadian vacation in Toronto last week, where they skated with some of the NHL alumni and capped off their trip with a visit to the CN Tower and then to the Mecca of hockey, so to speak, the Hockey Hall of Fame. The whole visit was kept under wraps until they were all safely back in Israel for security reasons. Organizers didn't want the teens to be targets for anti-Israel protests or worse. But our CJN Daily's producer, Zachary Kaufman, met up with the group at their Hockey Hall of Fame visit and prepared this report. Walking into the Great Hall at Toronto's Hockey Hall of Fame is a bit of a shock. You go past the food courts, registration desk and turnstiles, past a big bank of TV screens, each blaring the highlights of a historic hockey game, and then you step into a very different place. Built in 1885, the Great Hall is a temple dedicated to the Canadian national pastime. There are stained glass windows, dark wood paneling, and cases holding decades worth of gleaming silver major NHL trophies. And at the front, on a raised platform, a bima, you might say. Hockey's holy grail, the Stanley Cup. So when a group of 20 Israeli teens come rushing in, it's important to lay some ground rules. 18-year-old Max Deshanov translates for his teammates. If you feel that the Stanley Cup, you all have a chance to touch it. Do not try to lift it. Do not move it. Right? <laughs> Too bad, one says. Come on. Just three months ago, all of the players were evacuated from their homes near Israel's northern border. Now they were crowding around the famous hockey trophy. It doesn't look real to me, one says. Are they they like going to get bambar all over it? I don't think they've gotten any while they were here. They all hunt for the engraved names of their favorite players. Everybody's got to try and find Napier. Touching the very same cup that so many of their sports heroes have held up over the generations. One by one, the players draped a blanket-sized Israeli flag over their shoulders and posed beside the cup for a picture. I overheard one chaperone say it was like watching them take bar mitzvah photos. From there, the players headed to the Hall of Fame's Holy of Holies, Lord Stanley's Vault, where the very first model of the Stanley Cup is kept in a refurbished bank vault under security cameras and thick glass. 
That trophy was used until 1965 and donated by Lord Stanley of Preston, one of the first Governor Generals of Canada, who was tasked with appointing the country's Prime Minister after his close friend John A. Macdonald died in office. I stepped aside with Max Dashanov, the go-to translator in the group. Uh, I'm Maxim Dashanov, uh, 18 years old, from Israel. He looks stretched out, long arms, long legs, and long straight hair right down to his shoulders. Like most hockey players in Israel, Dashanov learned and fell in love with the sport at Merkaz Canada, or Canada Centre, with coaching and most of the equipment provided by Canadian supporters. The rink is about a mile from the border with Lebanon, in Metula, the northernmost town in the country. How did you get into hockey? In general, it feels like Israel, Middle Eastern country, in the desert. Well, my family is Russian in origin. I was born in Israel, but my dad and mom are all from Russia. And so I jumped around from sport to sport. I did basketball, but then the height thing came yeah. into play. <laughs> yeah, I'm not very tall. Uh, <laughs> it's good for audio. Yeah, yeah very I, important to tell people. Yeah, yeah, I did some martial arts and whatnot. But then, like, I guess around age seven, uh, one of my teammates here came like, yo, I got introduced to hockey. It's this great sport. You should come play. And my dad was like, hell yeah, go do it. So ever since I'm seven, six, I don't even know at this point, I've been just fell in love with the game. But I feel like most people in Israel probably don't even know how to skate, right? Oh, right. But yeah. we are yeah. from the north. Some of us do. Oh, oh that's fun. Because it's the center's from Canada, um, like, have you grown up hearing and thinking about Canada? Uh, Canada is, uh, has been, and like, the, our relationship with the Maccabi Canada and all of the Canadian sponsors and whatnot has been really detrimental to Israeli hockey and especially our club because without the donations they get, without all of the donations from Canada in general, we wouldn't have been able to even skate, I guess, because Canada Centre is partly, like the rink is partly because Canada, have, like, I mean, people from sure. Canada. Yeah, Canada has been detrimental in Israeli hockey. Do you know uh, our hometown hero, Zach Hyman? You've seen Your him play? Your hometown Jew hero? Yeah, yeah Jewish hero, not yeah. Jew, I guess. Yeah, we have seen, I've seen him play. He's cool. a good player. Well, obviously, he's in the NHL. Everyone is, here is amazing compared to us. <laughs> and uh, tell me about your trip. Okay, so we got to Canada like 10 days ago. We went from Toronto to Winnipeg. We had basically practice every day and having fun. We met with some local Jewish kids, some local uh, Jewish hockey players. Uh, Who did you meet with? Like famous ones? Oh, no, not okay. really. Just uh, kids, mainly. Uh, yeah. We had practice at the Jets facility, at the Iceplex. Uh, we watched a Jets, game, a Jets game, actually. Good seats, too. 10 cool. <laughs> 4, yeah. Uh, went to a Moose game, like the AHL team, uh, right on the glass, which was fantastic. And the uh, guy that was responsible for the parks, he gave us like 20 parks to give out for the whole team, which was cool. Nice. Yeah, it was. How does like seeing a hockey game in Canada feel different than seeing a hockey game in Israel? Well, f first things first, there's like 10,000 people in the arena. We don't yeah. get, we don't have those in Israel. Oh, not for hockey. Yeah. <laughs> not for hockey, no. So the soccer. Maybe. Well, soccer maybe yeah. yes. Hockey not, not so, so much. much. Yeah. <laughs> so the vibe is just completely different. The environment, everything is fantastic. What did it feel like to get back on the ice here? Um, because uh, you haven't been able to play for so long, you know, how did that feel? Can you describe that a little bit? Oh, just fantastic, man. The ice here is next level. I mean, just the ice quality, being able to even skate outdoors, which I've never done. Because, you know, Israel is kind of hot. Yeah. Just slightly hotter than You'd here. You'd be swimming. Yeah, you would. Uh, it has been fantastic because, as I said before, hockey, when, stop, when life is hard, hockey has been there for me. So mm -hmm. being able to do it right now has been amazing. Since the war in Israel started, um, what has your life been like? And yeah, what's been your relationship with hockey, I guess? That seems a little bit silly to ask, but um, I was curious about that piece of it. Uh, no, it's a good question. Uh, ever since the war started, because our practicing is in Metula, which is right on the border, uh, it has been deemed a closed military zone, so no entry, no nothing. So since October, we haven't really had any practice. We used to practice four times a week. Now, nothing really. And I've been evacuated to Tiberias, 
So basically my whole day looks like wake up, watch the news, get depressed and that's pretty much it. So are you going to school? Had had you been uh, going to school? I graduated last oh. year. Yeah. So I enlisted in two months. Oh, wow. Yeah. So this is like sort of the last thing you do before you go go in, no? Uh yeah, pretty much. Wow. Uh how are you feeling about that? If you uh, if you can talk about it. I'm excited about enlisting. I think it's my time to serve my country and uh, help in any way I can. Because for the past like I don't know, since October I've been feeling kind of useless sitting around while my friends put their life out for me and uh, me not doing anything, not even practicing or whatever, not being able to do what I love. So, again, I'm not sure if this is a strange question, but like you're saying, like your friends are out putting their lives on the line, um, and you're here playing hockey. How is hockey and how is sports important during these like hard times? I think it helps us. Uh, I want. I don't want to say forget because we don't want to forget, but it helps us take our mind off the horrible atrocities that are happening right now. Like, you know, people are dying every day. Friends, family, everyone here has know someone who passed away, died during the war, died before the it's it helps take our mind off the most serious stuff and let us some kids here are like 14, 13, 12, whatever. They should not be thinking about war. They should be having fun, kids practicing. And has it done that? Have they been able to have some fun or like what have you heard from other people? Uh, I've heard that they have had a really good time. The younger group went to Vancouver yeah. and I've heard they had a great time there. Everyone was nice to them and yeah I guess it's as <laughs> just as much as important for them to be able to get this opportunity to practice hockey again, do what they love because if they even love the game as half of as much as I do, yeah. I'm sure they had a great time. I, I'm going to be completely honest with you. I don't know anything about hockey. I don't know how to skate. I'm a bad Canadian. But coming here to the Hockey Hall of Fame, like, was there anything that you were particularly excited to see or um, that you've seen so far that has been like super cool? Um, I haven't ever seen the Stanley Cup in real life. Yeah. So being able to touch it to yeah. see how it actually feels is yeah. amazing. Uh, seeing some of uh, just the great legends of the game, the achievements, the actual game use sticks. Let's say Gretzky's jerseys are here, whatnot has been fantastic. And I would say it's borderline treason for you not to be able to skate. I, I, are you actually I know. Canadian? Don't, you sure? you, don't check my passport. Yeah. <laughs> um, lastly, do you think you'll keep playing hockey as you get older? When I get the chance, I'll always go out for a game, a pickup game, a bully game, who knows. Professionally, well, I'm not at that stage, unfortunately, right. never will be. But for fun and hockey has always been my uh, outlet when I'm upset, when I need to take my mind off stuff. Hockey has been fantastic. Don't take half measures when it comes to home security. Alarms and cameras work, but they'll only tell you that your worst nightmare just came true. Safety Screen by Metalex for windows and doors will keep your family safe and sound with real stopping power. They can't be cut, pried, or bashed in, so you can enjoy carefree ventilation in the spring and fall with peace of mind. And protect your fixed windows and doors with rock glass, an absolutely unbreakable clear covering. Call 416-638-2539 or visit metalexsecurity.com to book your free consultation. That's M-E-T-A-L-E-X security.com. Remember, prevention is always better than the cure. One of the group chaperones invited me over to see something the young visitors had stumbled on. Guys, you gotta show them the jersey. Let's see it. Very cool. A vintage looking blue and white jersey with the Star of David design across the chest and the word Israel down the center. Who, do you know whose it is or like? Uh, well, it might say on the card. Sure. I don't know. I it's nice. It's, it's uh, Nathan Eisner. Okay. He probably American. He's actually not American. Toronto-born Nathan Eisner wore the jersey throughout the 1992 World Championships, the first time the Israeli national team appeared on the international stage. Eisner and his teammates made history, winning Israel its first international hockey victory in an 8-2 game against Turkey. 
After the jersey, we headed to the interactive exhibits. Come on. Guys, we're going to walk around later, but I'm telling you, everyone's going to come here. We pass an ancient-looking Zamboni. This is an old Zamboni. Oh. <laughs> and 100-year-old goalie equipment. That certainly doesn't look like it would pass muster today. Italian. 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 Oh. Do you like the goalie equipment? He's a goalie. Wow. He's yeah. Old. Not a man. Sounds like a... insane. Yeah. Nowadays, you don't want a mask, you'll die. Eventually, we get to the interactive exhibits, where visitors get to try playing forward and also try playing goalie against virtual versions of NHL greats. You even get to take your pick. And then goalie. Lundquist, quick. Anderson, right. Uh, Lundquist, quick. Uh, no, never mind. As a forward, you shoot real pucks towards a virtual net with a virtual goalie. And when you play as a goalie, virtual players shoot real pucks at you that come zooming out of slots like balls out of a pitching machine. Max and I help translate between the exhibit guide and the Hebrew speakers. And what's your favorite jersey number? No, no, no. One, two, one, two. And then, uh, would you like easy, medium, or hard? Easy, easy, easy. He's a goalie. And does he shoot left or right? Left. Left. And in return, they taught me some hockey Hebrew. Uh, Hebrew? Yeah. We use the English though. Oh, there's not like a special Hebrew word for puck? No, it's or, puck. Or puck. puck. Goal. Goal is goal, you know. Stick? Hockey stick? Makel. Makel? Makel uh, hockey. Makel hockey. Agana is a defense. Agana is a defense. And what's the offense? Hatkafa. Hatkafa. And goalie is Shoher. And Dori is the best. <laughs> I caught up with one of the group's chaperones, Melissa Ronsberg, who plays for Team Canada at the Maccabi Games and is a former professional women's hockey player. And what is your role with the Maccabi team? Uh, I'm a member on the board uh, with Maccabi Canada, and I also was a member of the women's hockey team that was at the last Maccabi. So I got to play against some of the girls that are here now, so it's fun that I'm getting to reunite with them. Nice. And can you uh, tell me about what you've been doing, what you've been up to? Sure. So um, I went, uh, the group of us went to pick them up from the airport. So just took the bus ride back with them to, we did like a little welcome dinner, which was nice getting to know the girls a little bit. Uh, My parents are two of the people that are billeting some of them. So they've gotten to know them. And then I've also taken a few of them to practices of teams that I coach here in Toronto, just to let them get on the ice a little bit extra because they're dying for that and let them get on the ice with other girls. I've got four Jewish girls on my team, so it was fun to let them interact a little bit. And same with the two girls I took to a group that I trained. It was just let them interact with some girls here and kind of be normal teenage girls for a little bit um, while they're here. And then today we've enjoyed the CN Tower and now we're at the Hockey Hall of Fame, which for them, they obviously don't get to see all these trophies and everything. So it'll be a good experience for them to see everything here. Totally. What was it like, as far as you could tell, for them to like get back on the ice? Or, as I understand, they, they haven't been on the ice in a long time since the war started? Or Yeah, I know they hadn't been on the ice, but they were on the ice. Uh, so they were split half in Vancouver, half in Vin- Winnipeg. And so a bunch of them were on the ice there. Mm-hmm. Um, but getting them on the ice, they were actually, it was funny, when they first got here, they knew they were coming for four days. Two of those days are travel days, so not really sure. full days. But they didn't realize that at first. So when I told them they're only on the ice once, they were actually really disappointed because mm-hmm. for them, it's they want to be on the ice. That's what they're here for. So to be able to get, unfortunately, not all of them, but a few of them, the extra practice with my girls. And they had so much fun and getting a little bit of that extra skill development that they don't get as often in Israel in general. Um, it's fun to see how excited they are and how happy they were to be on the ice. For them, it's more like, especially on the girls' side, hockey in Israel is pretty new. Like they only have something like 50 girls who play hockey. Mm-hmm. So it's more the development side. And for them, like one of them made a comment about how they don't really have female coaches in Israel. So for them coming on the ice with my team last night where I have a full bench of four female coaches, I think for them that was really fun to see. And one of them actually made a comment to me that's probably going to stick with me for a long time about how cool it is that I coach. And so hope I said to them, like, hopefully one day you can coach so that they can pass it on. And it's just that the development side of like, obviously here we've had hockey for a long time. And so the development streams and options are there. And in Israel, that's slowly growing. Like I know people who do the development there, but it's not quite as crazy as it is here yet. <laughs> sure. I bet. Have you been to the Hockey Hall of Fame before? Have you been here? I have been here a number of times. Um, I actually was a member of the Clarkson Cup winning women's hockey, uh, uh, Mark and Thunder. So I am on the Clarkson Cup, uh, and there was a picture of us here, so I had to come and see it back when that happened. I've also been here as part of the Road Hockey to Conquer Cancer when they used to do um, the event here for the draft. At the interactive exhibits, 
I watched as the visiting teens left behind the sirens and the shelters and the evacuations and let themselves be swept away in the game they love. I asked Liv Sharabi for some live commentary for me as we watch her friend Orit playing forward. A lot of which was probably best, she said in English. Orit Sioni is uh, shooting now to the net. So she now shot... she's breaking the, the room. Okay, she's breaking the room. <laughs> uh, oh. She didn't score. This uh, in her usual quality? No, no, she can be better. And yeah, yeah, she's just a bit nervous. What do you think? She can, what can she do better right now? Uh, not be nervous. And shoot to the net. And not shoot uh, on the goalie. Miss again. One last time. Oh. No, she missed again. Arit asked Liv if she said nice things about her during the interview. <laughs> Liv tells her about some of the tips she was giving, and Orit does not seem happy. <laughs> it's a good tip. Yes, yeah. No, it's not a good tip. I go to bed. Like every one of her teammates, Liv and her family have had to overcome a lot since the war began. Uh, so my name is Liv Sharabi. I live in Kfar Giladi. Um, I'm 18 years old, and I'm playing for for now for like 15 years. Wow. Yeah. Um, I started playing because my family started. Like my sister started to play, and like uh, three of my cousins and my brother. <laughs> so pretty much all of us are playing. But I started from figure skating, uh-huh. but it wasn't for me. Uh-huh. So uh, I, when I saw that my family is playing hockey, I, I wanted to do it too, so yeah. Are they like from Russians or like, is that how your family got into it or? Uh, no, my mom is Dutch. Oh, okay. Uh, so they, not, they don't have like a lot of hockey in the Netherlands. So no, no Russian, but yeah, it just like it was really close to my house. Like okay, cool. we, I play in Metula, which is like five minutes from Fargiladi, where I live. So yeah, so it just like was really close. And when I started, I just seen that it's so much fun to play. Most people in Israel probably don't know how to skate, right? Like yeah, I think most people doesn't even know that we have hockey in Israel. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. were your friends ever like, is it weird that you play hockey or? I think in Israel because they don't know we have hockey. So yeah. if I say that I'm a girl that play hockey, it's weird for them because they don't see a bunch of hockey in Israel and they don't see yeah. at all girls that play hockey in Israel. And like you said, you live close to Matula. So was were you evacuated recently or? Yeah, in the beginning of the war, like, yeah. at the, like the day it started, uh, pretty much, we are uh, we, we evacuated from the kibbutz yeah. Yeah. to a couple places. First, we were in Nir David, which is a kibbutz more in the south, I guess. I don't know. I don't really remember. And from there, we went to uh, a place ne- next to the Kineret. Okay, and that's where your family is now. Me personally, my because my mom is from the Netherlands. Yeah. She's not Jewish. So uh, we decided like to go to my family in the Netherlands. Okay. So, but my dad and my sister are still in Israel. My sister is in the army. She's a combat. So right, she was next to Aza. Now she is in the uh, the border of Egypt. Okay. Which is pretty far from where I live. So it's like uh, six hours drive, and my dad is protecting the kibbutz. Okay. Wow. And what's it been like for you to be in Canada? Can you tell me about, a little bit about your trip? How you've been feeling being here? Wow, it was like to hear that we were flying to Canada and to play hockey. Like it was so exciting. For me personally, I didn't play for like five months. So it's a lot for me. So yeah, to hear that I can see my friends and go play, it was so exciting. Like to get even to play in Canada, it's my first time here. So yeah, it's a lot of fun. Are people even thinking about hockey at such a serious time, at such a scary time? Like, do people want to be playing? Do we? Do you want? Do you want to be playing? Or if you're all day thinking about this stuff, like you basically every day seeing stuff in Instagram, in TikTok, like in everywhere, like in television. So. It's the one time like you can like 
not be with your phone and be with friends and uh, have fun and not think about anything, only about the game. So for me, it's, it's, like, it's like the best. If I know that I have a practice or something, it's so exciting. Like that you don't need to be like every day thinking about the war and yeah, to get a bit out of it, like in your head, like yeah. There's a very different hockey culture here than in Israel. Yeah. What's it been like for you to experience that and um, what have been like some of the big differences, I guess? Like, uh, so in Israel, if you like, when I play hockey, yeah. so you don't have, you're not surrounded about uh, with a lot of people that know about hockey. So here is like every day is about it. Like everybody knows the players, they, yeah. the games. Like everybody been here in a NHL game. Like yeah. this time with Warriors, like the first time that I wore in an NHL right. game, we were in the Jets game. So it was really cool. Oh yeah, before the war, how often would you play? Uh, four uh, days a week, maybe sometimes more. Wow. Uh, and we had like a, a game every... Who is your favorite team? Who's your favorite player? Uh, Pittsburgh. Yeah. And uh, I think like uh, Sydney Crosby, I guess. And that's what Jewish Canada sounds like for this episode of the CJN Daily, sponsored by Metropia. Integrity, community, quality, and customer care. If you want to learn more about Melissa Ronsberg's stellar career in women's hockey, both in Canada and in Israel, listen to the CJN's Menchwarmer podcast, where she talks about winning the Clarkson Cup in the Canadian Women's Hockey League and playing in the Maccabi Games in 2022 in Israel. We've put the link in our show notes. We're a proud member of the CJN Podcast Network. Ellen Besner is our host. Michael Freeman is our executive producer. Thanks for listening.